Hello kids, I'm going to read you another story today. This one is one of your grandfather's stories called Johnny and Donnie and the Pepper Pot. Growing up in the old days meant radio instead of TV, board games in the place of computers, sharing both bath water, and generally having to create our own entertainment. Pa was especially good at this, and the boys just naturally took after him. Pa worked at Red's Meat Distribution Plant. Sometimes it seemed like it was Pa who owned the place rather than Red. Phil Eck also worked there, and he could be a right touchy guy. You didn't want to cross Phil Eck. Upon occasion, Pa would bring Johnny, Donnie, Eddie, and Davy to work with him to unload a truck. And if the job was really big, Richie would come too. Pa, once, even got Annie and Anjo a little driving job there, which turned out to be quite a disaster. But that's another story. While working at the plant, Red would occasionally peek into the deep trees where Eddie and Davy were working and say in a grim voice, Are you boys rotating that meat? They would respond meekly, Oh yes, Red. Then, satisfied, Red would leave and the boys would continue working in that cold freezer. But as that deep freezer got colder and colder, Eddie could only think of getting out of it. I don't think we really need to rotate everything, Eddie would grumble. Soon, Davy wouldn't think so either, and they would finish the job without having rotated everything. Red just couldn't figure out how the meat could get freezer burned, being rotated and all. Eddie and Davy weren't the only ones taking shortcuts. As Johnny worked, his brain was doing overtime thinking up a shortcut to his own part-time job, and once he figured something out, he could usually talk Donnie into doing it. Like that time Red told them never to try to unload a whole pallet of eggs at one time. That didn't make any sense to Johnny, since there was a pallet jack. With Donnie half-heartedly convinced of Johnny's win wisdom, down the ramp he came with those eggs. Donnie watched in horror as they teetered and tipped. And then down they came. Johnny just stood puzzled as to what the flaw was in his theory. Red told them that what he thought of their theory but it can't be printed. Despite the stress, Pa saw potential in these innovative boys. Pa, always hanging in there with the boys, won their affection and even became an example that the boys wanted to follow. Johnny, trying to think how Pa would think, talked to Donnie into loading up the plant's coffee pot with pepper. Donnie was understandably, understandably a bit reluctant, but then he figured that Johnny's ideas always had a way of working out in the end sometimes. Besides, he could always claim that getting up at 3 a.m. to work at Red's could do things to a boy's mind, not to mention the low pay. So, with Johnny standing guard, Donnie laced that pot with red pepper, and then added a little more, and more. Johnny, getting anxious by the door, coaxed, come on, dump it in. Donnie squirmed a little, looked around, and dumped it in, all of it, just like Donnie said. The boys continued to work, always keeping an eye on the break room where I set the spiked coffee. Then they stopped and stared at each other, their eyes getting big, when, of all people, Phil Eck took a coffee break. From where Johnny and Donnie watched, Phil Eck looked like a great gray whale spouting into the sea. Quickly the boys became mighty busy, working like mad non-stop until the day was over. Phil thought Pa was the one who did it and Phil said some awful words. Johnny thought it was probably better to let Pa take the blame, it being Phil and all, and Donnie, petrified with fear, could see the wisdom of this. In the end, they had an unspoken agreement never to touch that coffee pot again, and they never did. Poor Pa was perplexed over the whole deal, but it never occurred to him to ask the boys about it. The end. I love you kids. Goodbye.